thing right. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Bert Bascalani, the St. Louis Science Center. We're going to go on podcasting soon. How is everyone today? Um, I was in Seattle. Oh, Their yeah. science center. Yeah. And, Pacific Science Center. And yeah, yeah, I think that was it. And they had the um, the Terracotta Warriors. Oh, yeah. That's been great. That was cool. I was like, and, and Mike Conzen, who is with PGAV. Yeah, I know Mike. Okay, and so he was one of our TEDx speakers yeah. as well. And yeah, Mike's he great. he designed the thing in China. Like, he was talking about the whole, like, there's some little guy, the farmer that found it. He will hide his face from people. And, and then you, and to, and, but if the whole idea is you have to pay him to get a picture with him. Hmm. So that's how this dude's making his money. <laughs> Well, I was like, you look, know, I found that thing. We, we had the movie at our Omnimax Theater. Okay. And it was, people love it, right? It's a well, great yeah, story. It's amazing. It's, a, it's an amazing uh, discovery in itself. And, and then to think about these warriors, these little terracotta warriors, and how many and, and like the reason for them. And so it was crazy how many yeah. there were. Yeah, it was really, it's and a then neat story. they were painted. Yeah. So they're, the paint came off however they did it right. whenever but um and but i was like really they were all painted and everything yeah. and well you know you, you got to remember that paint at that time was all natural right there weren't any petroleum products right, in the, in the right. paint so it was probably dyes and you know and things from natural vegetation and so on to do with the tree sap they were oh, saying yeah, that they were they yeah. mixed it with tree sap yeah, that and that when sense. that sort of just kind of melted off or yeah. something and but I can't even imagine, I mean, I'm just trying to imagine them going, let's build this many warriors for this king. Yeah. You know, and. Yeah, no one's building warriors for me. No. Right? <laughs> Where are my, Those I are some, some of the warriors. lost things, right. The lost <laughs> things that we would really love to have back. <laughs> right. When I'm dead, I actually don't think I'd care. Yeah, but, I wouldn't But either. still, you just wonder, like, he's so great. We're going to build this many, yeah. you know? I mean, and all these, I, I don't know. Did they just not, I guess they didn't have a lot to do back well, then. So I, I it's like, let's it. build a bunch of warriors for him. Yeah, I mean, we have the King Tut exhibit on right now at the at I the saw that. Center. I went and saw that, yes. Yeah, and um, imagine that, you know, from nine years old to 19. Right. Is this king, pharaoh, whatever. And he has all these riches and all these, you know, people working for him and so on. I don't know, it, my child at nine years old, <laughs> I was just happy that he got up in the morning <laughs> and we could sure put clothes on and get him to school. The country, you know, yeah, can you imagine I, a nine-year-old now running a country? It'd be I, like, and, Taco Tuesday for everyone. You and know? this is, I don't mean this the way this is going to sound probably, but a nine-year-old boy and a nine-year-old girl are very different. Yeah. A nine-year-old boy is a lot more work than a nine-year-old girl. I'm just saying. <laughs> I've got both. So I'll say mine. I won't make that broad okay, judgment for gotcha, all. Gotcha, gotcha. But in my case, clearly that was uh, the oh issue. Oh, my gosh. So, and then and then I thought what was interesting is it was like he had, you know, he was mummified, and then they put him in. It was like yeah, it was multiple, like the Russian yeah, doll stacking thing. Yeah, stacking right. Like, and then we got this gold coffin and that gold coffin and the next gold coffin, and then we got this big gold thing, and you're like, why? Yeah. Why do we need so many? But I'm sure there was, and it was some quick. I mean, I don't think tradition they expected. around all of it, but yeah. But what am, am I? So what? No, you're fine. It was just coming off. Oh, oh. I thought. Wait, are these so new that now they're like? Yeah. Put them so, far away special. from you. Right. <laughs> no. Far yeah. away microphone. Same microphone. Like, Miss, you're talking too loud. <laughs> no. no. Well, I think I'm ready to go. All so, right. Just so you know, I'm sure you've used plenty of microphones before, but these are very directional, so you'll just want to keep it pretty I'm close to your mouth. I'm digging this. Look at, right at oh, see. Yeah. Look, everybody. Yeah. Show off the new the new digs. I know. Our, our owner was so proud of those. He was like, check these out. <laughs> but I think <laughs> that's like a good a, idea, uh, especially with people is. doing the live streaming now right. and all that's that. A lot you of got to, right? I think it's awesome. You got to get your logo in place. Yeah, right. it's kind of like a beer pole at a bar, right? I mean, you yeah. got to have a pole, right. and it's got to have your. You got to know what flavor we are. Right, <laughs> something like something that. Something like that. Now it'll be working. All right, so you might want to come a little bit sure. closer now that I'm sure. looking Let me at this. Pull this over. Yep. All right, good. And good. do we need to do sound check or anything? You sound good. I think everyone sounds great. So. Don't we though? <laughs> Yay us. <laughs> One better than Hooray the other. Hooray for us. And thank you so much for coming to do this. Oh, by absolutely. The way. Thank My you pleasure. So it was much. fun.
Are you excited about yeah. the TEDx thing? Yeah, I'm really. Excited. I love it. It has been an absolute joy to do it. It's like I one bet. of my favorite things about my life. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you know, and it's so funny because, and Steve will tell you, when Steve decided to do this whole TEDx thing, and he so he called his brother. Bob Summers, who lives in Hawaii, mm-hmm. but I had met Bob here. We were part of a marketing thing together, and um, he called Bob and was like, yeah, and I'm doing this, and I don't know. I need some help. I, I, I wish I knew somebody that did social media, and that was the whole thing, and, and Bob was like, oh, Mish Hancock. You should talk to her. She knows about social media, and she knows a lot of people. I bet you she'd be great at this. Having no idea. They had no idea. That I had been saying for years to my family, this Ted thing's going to be a thing with me. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, I want it. I like right? got it. I was like I was like I was like it's, it's going to happen. I don't know what it means though. And and yeah. I've learned that you never ever put, you don't ever like form a picture in your mind because yeah. then you yeah. might miss something. So you just let the universe bring it to you. And when Bob Summers contacted me, he's like, hey, my brother Steve, and he's doing it. And I thought about you. I was like, yeah, you should have thought about me. That yeah. was the perfect thing to think about. That's great. <laughs> Let me meet that Steve guy. And now we're best buddies. I will stop talking. No, you're fine. I will start. I will I will introduce. You tell me when you're ready. Okay. Anybody ready? Oh, did we explain ready. the whole time thing? No, I haven't. We should do that. So there's three nine-minute sections. Don't worry if we go a little bit over. No yeah. biggie, right? Um, and so the first two are you and I chit, chat, chit, chat. And then the last part is I get to ask you some kind of funky questions. Sure, yeah. Easy. Great. Yeah. All within your realm. It's all right. Take I can them handle wherever it. you go, yep. wherever you wish. It's nothing, you know, like, I'm not stumping. It's all right. No, no weird mathematical hey, I, equations. I've had it all. Over the years, <laughs> I've had it all. See, I love it. He's a veteran. Easy. Some people that Freak have never out. done yeah. this before, you know, they're really freaked out and they want lots of information. I'm like, just listen to the podcast. It's, it's totally casual. Yeah. I promise you I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm not <laughs> it's Howard okay. Stern. It's all right. Know. I, I, I'm, I'm good. All right. We are ready when you are, Sam. Let us know. Here we go. Escalani. Escalani. I like it. Hi, this is Mish Hancock, and you are listening to Mishmash, a place where I get to talk to the weird, wacky, wonderful people of this world, people I adore and want to know more about. Today, my guest is Bert Vescalani. He is president and CEO of the St. Louis Science Center. He is leading the St. Louis Science Center to a brighter future, upholding the center's mission. I got to do it again. Upholding. Upholding. Let me try this again. Got it. Let us do it again. You know what? Hold on. I want to make a change because it's too much. St. Louis Science Center. He is leading the center. I'm not going to say St. Louis Science Center. Come on. He is leading the center to a brighter future. Upholding the center's mission. To... Okay, got it. I've done this before, I promise. Uh, it's all right. Hi, this is Mish Hancock, and you are listening to Mishmash, a place where I get to talk to the weird, wacky, and wonderful people of this world, people I adore and want to know more about. Today, my guest is Bert Vescalani. He is the president and CEO of the St. Louis Science Center. He is leading the center to a brighter future, upholding the center's mission to ignite and sustain lifelong science and technology learning. Welcome, Bert. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks Thank for having me. Thank you so me. much for being here. So how long have you been with the Science Center? Well, December will be six years. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What's the most exciting thing that's happened there in six years? Well, we've built some new exhibits. We've done some new uh, um, renovations and changes to the, the Science Center. So those are always fun. We Last right. year we opened our GROW exhibit. It's our largest exhibit expansion in our history. Uh, it was a indoor-outdoor story about food and where your food comes uh, from. Yes, gotcha. And because this region's so rich, you know, in, in, in the parts of the food process, from right. processing to picking to growing to, you know, all the, the pieces and parts of the, the whole cycle, uh, it, it seemed like an obvious story for us. So it's been great. And we have a big combine in there. We've got, you know, water play space, a seed library. There's all kinds of wacky stuff a in there. A seed library. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So um, we had on, one of our past speakers was Dr. Jim Carrington. Yeah, he's awesome. Right? Yeah. And, so, and his whole thing around food. Food is such a huge subject. I mean, it always has been, but now the big subject is can we feed everybody that's showing up here on Earth? Right. I mean, there's there's that part, which is clear, right? And right. we're producing more 
food than we ever have. Right. And, and at a faster pace with more challenges than ever. Um, there's a whole food safety piece of this as well. Got gotcha. um, You know, if you think about a crisis taking place and wiping out a chunk of the Midwest uh, for one reason or another, uh, you that know, would not whatever be good. it might be. It would be bad, not not just for us here in the Midwest, but it would be bad for a lot of um, people that depend on the produce, the production that we have. Right. You know, lower state Missouri, down the Boot Hill, there's a high level of rice production. I think we're the fourth largest producer really? of rice. Yeah. Okay, I had no idea. I know it. I I didn't How either until we built this exhibit. Um, you know, the corn growers and the soybean, we, we kind of expect those and we see right. those as we drive through. Right. Um, we grow cotton uh, south. We There's all these products that come out of Missouri and Illinois and the region um, that are pretty amazing. So it's a great, it was a great place for us to tell that story and to talk about how people are connected to their food. Um, Jim's work out at Danforth Plant Science Center and right. what they're doing gives us kind of the science that we can feed our public with and and show them a little bit about there's some really cool things happening and science is super important to our survival. Yeah, well, yes, of course. And so with the food thing, um, does the exhibit talk anything about hydroponics? Because I, I just we had do. on another guest that was yeah. she's starting a whole hybrid hydroponics thing. And, and it sounds like that's a very efficient way yeah. to grow food. It, I think it's getting better and better. So hydroponics and aquaponics and the combinations of, of different, I don't think any one is perfect. Um, all right. of them in combination can create a really unique opportunity. And it depends where you are. If you're in an urban setting or a more rural setting, what part of the country do you live in? You know, what access do you have to water? What, what access do you have to uh, other resources that might be available? How much sun do you get a year? All of those are yeah, factors right. in, in thinking about the combinations of what you would use and where you would use it. In the Midwest, we have great soil. We have relatively available water. Mm -hmm. We have lots of water. We do. Um, well, I mean, and we really need to be thankful for that. We do, because there's lots of other places that aren't so great with Sometimes water. Sometimes we get too much water, <laughs> almost like... We do. We, don't you wish you could say... Hello, Mother Nature. Yeah. Can we spread this out a bit? Yeah, give it to someone else for just a little while. <laughs> just we a little need while. it back. We want it back. Right. We need it for things. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those things that uh, makes the Midwest great. Uh, you know, it makes us uh, uh, provides us an opportunity to do things where other places of the world cannot. And, right. Uh, and so we've got to take advantage of that and and do it responsibly, of course, and and think about what that that entails. But. You know, at the Science Center, we're trying to tell those stories. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to find maybe the things that aren't so cool that could be really cool, but people just don't know enough about them. Well, yeah. I mean, just th that whole subject of rice. I mean, I literally had no idea. It's, it's yeah. practically in our backyard, and we don't even know Absolutely. this. Absolutely. And you got to learn about it somewhere. So thank yeah. you, Science Center, for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. We love to have and you came from Shedd Aquarium, correctly? Yeah, correct? I, ran, I actually ran a zoo before I came here. Oh, okay. In Grand Rapids, Michigan. All right. Uh, called John Ball Zoo. John uh, Ball Zoo. John Ball zoo. Park and John Ball Zoo. And then I was at Shedd Aquarium before that uh, for about 14 years. So that's oh, really God, where yeah. I got into the, you know, kind of nonprofit, uh, informal learning education right. experience, museum world, if you will. And so, from, so tell me about the zoo. I mean, Tell it me, was great. The zoos are so awesome, yeah. right? I mean, and you know our zoo. Yeah, well, it's obviously. great zoo. We've got an awesome yeah. zoo. So tell me about, like, was there a, an animal that you felt like you connected with there? Or? You know, everyone would ask that question. Really? When I was both Dang at that, it. Here when I, I was at, thinking I'm all, I know. You know, unique and such. Well, you're not going to be so happy with my answer. I, I think, okay, um, let's not talk about it. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I think there's, uh, both at the aquarium and at the zoo, there's animals that I thought were really cool mm -hmm. and had... Um, some great education impact opportunities. Okay. And those are the ones I had some kind of affinity towards, if right. you will. I loved our sea otters at the shed. Oh my gosh, I love, I, I love otters. There was great stories there. There was great stories about conservation. Mm -hmm. um, and what they do and their role in the environment was really important. Uh, they eat abalone and the abalone eats the... Uh, the fronds of the kelp, and when the kelp breaks off, erosion can take place. I mean, there's really good Got stories ya. there, right? Got they ya. raft. They hold arms and raft as a no, group. Oh, they're so they cute. They eat 25-ish percent of their body weight every day. Oh, and my gosh. I think about that for a minute. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of food. 
and they're just cool, they're cool critters, right? Well, they're and they're way cute. My daughter they, wanted one. We were we were in Seattle yeah, at their they're science. They're cute center. from afar. Well, and that's what I told her. I said, I don't think they're they're pets. No, you can't. I don't think this is something. Especially, can you imagine how much food you'd have to buy? Them? Yeah, it, it, it's it, it's you know. So that that was one of. My, I love the blue whales. I love some of the other animals, but and some of the more uh, unique animals like cuttlefish and things that were like yeah. people didn't really quite we had a seahorse exhibit that was amazing uh we i think i saw that uh, and was, that was amazing seahorse symphony was the name of it it was fantastic exhibit you know the sharks are the sexy ones and the right. dolphins are the sexy ones <laughs> but there's all these other critters that live in the ocean that are pretty special but and and cuttlefish are amazing i mean they they're like they're like amazing. octopus right because they can just change yeah, all their it, colors now i i've actually um been snorkeling yeah. With cuttlefish. Really? And, yeah. the, and the first time I saw one, it looked like a weird little alien guy. I'm like, what yeah. are you? And then, because he was making all these weird, you know, colors right. and everything. And then when I got around to another perspective, I'm like, oh, it's a cuttlefish. I get it. Now I didn't know what the heck it was at first. Yeah, and we know, you know, we still don't know very much about our ocean. We were learning right. so much about it. We, we've only been to the bottom of the ocean in some spots at a very, I mean, we know more about the surface of the moon than we know about the bottom of exactly. the ocean. So that was exciting for me. And there's great conservation stories and really important things to remember about our oceans and how much we depend on them. Right. So then you pivot to the zoo. <laughs> and the zoo, uh, I, you know, I got to tell you, there was one critter after another that you would get connected to. Um, we had, when we brought our lemurs in, um, the lemurs were, they're just the coolest little guys. Really? I mean, I got to tell you. And uh, they were really fun. You know, the tigers and lions. We built a lion exhibit while I was there and, and redid some other exhibits uh, that made some changes uh, for the, you know, for the visitors and, and for the animals to make it better habitats. Right. We've learned a lot about animals and what they need. Um, and there's still more to learn. And trying to build the best habitats, both for the animals and for the people who are Which visiting. Which is so challenging because don't it you, is. again, let's talk about food. Don't you have to figure out what food to grow for them or where to get the food? I mean, yeah. it's not like the lion food is available in, yeah. in Michigan. It's not right? at Schnucks. You don't <laughs> right. go to you Schnucks can't just to find go. Yeah. Where's the lion food section? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and it's got to be a particular diet. They want to do the right things. We've learned more about animal nutrition with animals uh, in zoos and zoological settings, exotic animals, if you right. will. And so over time, you as you learn those things, you can can do some, some you know, kind of pretty interesting changes in diets and things like that. Um, the reproductive biology uh, that's happening in zoos to create opportunities for conservation to take place um, right. is, is fantastic. We learn more and more about those animals. A lot of the the treatments and, and opportunities in the wild start really in zoos to, to get um, oh, cool. a better understanding. And then you, you can take those out into the field, if you will. So, but habitats, you know, it's there's more people and less habitat and... Um, there's challenges there, right? There's yeah. conservation challenges there. So um, I think uh, zoos play an important part uh, of that discussion. And there, there's not everyone loves zoos and not everyone loves aquariums. Right. Um, but I think everyone agrees that uh, the animals are pretty special. And, right. and how do you uh, do the best thing for the animals and then get people to get excited about that and make a difference in their choices, what they do in their life and so exactly. on. Exactly, and the educational component so right. that we know this animal exists and what the animal needs. So then I came to the Science Center. <laughs> and I started my career in a classroom. So I was a high school science teacher. I saw that. So it's full circle for me. Yeah. And um, the Science Center, I get to dabble and play in all of it. Uh, because without the science center, without scientists, without people discovering and learning and challenging, you know, uh, theories and ideas, we wouldn't have zoos or aquariums. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we really wouldn't. Exactly. And so there, there are places to ignite that passion and to get people to want to learn more, to think a little bit different, um, to do it without uh, grades and and classrooms. Pure learning. And, Just Pure yeah, curiosity fun. and learning. Fun and educational. It. Put them together and you got the science and, center. And you got the science center. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back with Bert. That's awesome. Good? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I love that you've been at both a zoo and 
I mean, that's, a, that's, I mean, think of, that's like all the, you've covered the bases. I, I Where joked, will you go next? <laughs> I joked with a friend of mine about, yeah, I think maybe an art museum would be fun next, you know? He's like, Bert, I cannot see you in an art museum. We're going to have I, a live art. Yeah, <laughs> I really. animals and sea life. <laughs> I like active spaces. I, right. I like that kind of energy Ooh, that I like takes. that, that, I like the thought of that, active spaces. Yeah, and. And not to say that art museums aren't that way, because well, many course, are, right. but they're a little bit more contemplative by design. Right, right. And um, places like the Science Center are meant to be hands-on and active and, right. you know, manipulating and moving around and building and growing and whatever. So, yeah. All right. You ready for us, Sam? Look, Sam joined us. Hi, Amber. <laughs> I love it when I see the people that, you know. The people we love. Okay. Here we go. And we are back with Bert Vescalani, and we've been talking about all the amazing things that you have been doing over the years. So let's go back to science teacher. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Were you the coolest science teacher? <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, I'm amazing. You'd have to ask my students. <laughs> I thought I was a lot of fun. Um, now that all might be in my head. I, I think what happens. <laughs> When you first start teaching, and, and I, every teacher's a little bit different, but you're unconsciously incompetent. I mean, you just don't know what you don't know. Right. You you don't know how to manage a classroom. You you know their content usually. You have a right. pretty good understanding of that. But you don't know how to layer it and, and build upon experiences and so on. And then you get consciously incompetent, <laughs> and you start to go, i got to figure this out. <laughs> and then you figure it out. Right. And so for some, that's a longer journey, and some it's a shorter journey. Uh, for me, I, I had a, a great opportunity to tinker and play and try new things. I was in a school that, um, whether they knew or not, I don't know, um, <laughs> but I was trying and experimenting uh, both with the students and with the content that we were uh, and what playing age with. Were you... High school. I had okay. freshmen through juniors. I had some seniors, but really I was I was the younger part of the high school okay. uh, experience. And I taught a little bit of everything. Um, I taught some stuff that I really didn't know much about. And, and I literally went back to school and tried to catch up, <clears throat> you know, oh, to try to you. teach it. Yeah. And I got, I, I would say that, it's not my advice for most teachers, <laughs> but it was awesome because I, instead of just learning it, I was learning it to teach it. Right. And I was thinking about it while, you know, so I'm, I'm learning um, physical geography, which I had no experience in, in, in college about. I was a biology guy, right? right? And so physical geography. So as I'm learning physical geography, I'm thinking, how am I going to teach this? This seems boring. This seems cool. This seems, you know, and you're... And so I was constantly um, sorting it in my head, which was a different way to learn for right. me, right? Yeah, and right. and a kind of a unique way to do it. So that was fun. I love teaching. I never would have left. Um, well, that's what I was going to ask you, I mean, because how does one, I mean, is that a normal path that the, to no. go from being a teacher to, hi, I'm now the director and CEO of this, you uh, know? No, I, I, uh, I've traditionally not taken that. A normal path. Yeah, and I mean, almost I, was, I was trying to get that, that together in my head. I'm like, I mean, how yeah. many teachers right now are going, "Hey, I right. could do that." You know? We, you know, we do hire a lot of teachers in our in our world, and and um, museum educators, uh, zoo and aquarium educators, right? They're kind of the fabric of what we're all about because our mission's about education, right? And so often you'll see that transition take place, but. For me, it started as a volunteer. I started volunteering at the aquarium right before, uh, right when they were opening the Oceanarium. Oh, Which gosh. was their big expansion. Yes, exactly. So I was pretty lucky. Um, I started there as a volunteer at the right time. Right. They were growing. They were building. Um, there was a lot of excitement about the aquarium at the time. You know, there still is a lot of excitement about the corner. It's a phenomenal place. Well, it's place. An amazing. The yeah. Oceanarium is amazing. Yeah. And then it looks all over the lake, and it's just Gorgeous. It's incredible. Yeah. It's And the beluga whales. Oh, my gosh. Those are so they're freaking cute. cute. <laughs> I mean, I they're know, these Big, huge, fat melons and that so, head that moves around. Did you see the door, the latest Dory movie? I, I'm sorry. I did okay, not. You my have kids to are older. Be, 
I know. So are mine, and I'm still, You're watching, still watching Pixar movies. Right. But but it was um, the Beluga in it is hilarious. I mean, yeah. it's just hilarious, and so you just you should watch it. Just well, they that. they have a uh, I've seen them in the wild um, in Churchill, Canada. Oh, and, really? Uh, um, they're everywhere in the water, in the rivers, and so on and so forth. They come into the rivers, and and the little calves, and the you know the full grown. It, it's just they're they're amazing animals. Uh, their vocalizations are incredible. Uh, that because of that big old fat melon on their head, you know, it it'll vibrate and do things different. You'll wow. see it kind of contort. Really? They, they don't have fused vertebrae in their neck. So that's why they can kind of tilt their head where dolphins can't. They look like they got a neck right, brace right, on. Right, right, yeah. Um, so it makes them even look like they're cuter. Oh, you know, there's they a, can kind of cock their they head got a, a bit smile the on thing. all yeah, the time. Exactly. Uh, yeah, they're they're pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, are there any other animals you've seen in the wild that you were like, "That's cool"? Yeah, I think there's some animals that I've I've had respect for. Um, I was in Peru uh, on the Amazon River. Ooh. And uh, we got a chance to see the uh, what they call the pink dolphins, and that um, is a species that's that's thin. Uh, okay. There's not a lot of them around, and and they're uh, they're just they're you know in, in this really kind of chocolate covered river. You know, right. all of a sudden this dolphin appears, and you just a don't expect it, even though you know they could be there, but. Uh, in the ocean, you can kind of expect it, and you see them. But in right. rivers, you just—it's just—I guess for me, it just wasn't yeah, a part no, of what I, I would I expect. Agree. And um, so those are really special. Um, some of the, the the things that scare people are some of the things that are probably um, more important to our culture and society, and and to ecology, um, like snakes and spiders and things that you know. A lot of people freak right, out about. Right, right. Um, so you know, there's some, there's some amazing animals are amazing, um, and, and we know more about what animals do now um, through science. And the more investigation that we can make, kind of into the intricacies of these animals, and understand them better, the better we'll um, be able to protect them and save them and support them. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot to be learned. Right. Uh, you, you think about this, it wasn't that long ago, and you everything was from a macroscopic perspective. And then we started getting more and more microscopic. So we discovered a whole world in, in the grain of, or on, a, on a, um, a leaf or in a small part of the environment that we never knew about. Exactly. Right? The, the fact that ants are laying pheromones so other air, ants can follow are just kind of amazing. Oh, cool. No, and, I didn't know. You know That's awesome. They, they just go on and on and on. There's and and most of which I'm just a neophyte on. I don't, I don't understand like some of these biologists right. who study these things and and go through them. So science is an amazing thing. It's being questioned all the time. That's part of science. Right. Uh, it, you're supposed to you're supposed to question things. And, and try to prove them wrong, to be honest with you. And that, that's, that's what we do. Okay. And so teaching kids how to investigate and, and trial, you know, and error, and do it in a safe place like the Science Center where judgment doesn't exist and, you know, it's just play and have fun and discover and try to solve a problem or think about a solution in a different way. Um, how do you build this big arch? I don't know. Give it a shot. Yeah, See what right, you can do. Right. If you turn the block this way, does it work? If you move it this way, does it work? What's up in the sky? You know, uh, we, we talk about what was in the bottom of the ocean, but think about planets that we're discovering and galaxies that we're discovering every day. Exactly. Um, it just, space is another whole. And, you know, when I, so I, I, when I was at the Science Center, I was at the planetarium, and I was yeah. watching one of the shows, and it was all about the stars and what have you. And, um they show that map of the United States and the light pollution. Yeah. So if you go south of St. Louis, there's a really dark black area. That's where I live. So oh. I have, I get to see, you, I have awesome sky yeah. where I'm at. Well, Mark Twain uh, National Forest has got some really great spots as well. And, um, but it's all treed in, so you can't right. necessarily see, you know, in those spots. I so. live at a lake, so we got like a great big, you know, I can just like yeah. big expanse. We'll you have know? to come down. Yeah. We'll invite all the guests down. Yeah, everyone oh, that's listening. Everyone on Earth is coming out for Hillsboro. <laughs> for, I bet for they are. The eclipse because we're yeah. like right in the center You're of in a it. Perfect spot. And I was gonna do a, you know, 
Eclipse invitation? Party? Well, no, we're doing it at a party. I was going to do an invitation, and I decided I didn't have to because everyone's just inviting themselves. So I've just people like calling, going, "Can I come?" I'm like, "Sure, come on out." Absolutely. You know, so anybody out there, if you want to come to Hillsboro, <laughs> there's my us. address. We'll you might want to keep that a little bit quiet. <laughs> Shh, I won't let this out before the twenty. If they don't want to, if they don't want to go to all the way to Hillsboro and they live in the area, they can come to the science center. There you go. We don't get the full. You know, the full experience. But it's experience. still going to be awesome. It'll be incredible. Yeah, it'll still be awesome. Well, thank you, Bert. We're going to take another quick break, and we'll be right back. I know it's so funny how many people were like, so you live out there. I'm yeah. just wondering if I, I'm like, sure, come on out. You know? It's great. So at this point, I told my husband, I'm like, we better get some, <laughs> some extras. supplies. You know? yeah. So we bought a bunch of the glasses, and we're going to you know, do some hot dogs. and Good things for people to drink and eat. I'm like, bring a side dish. Just show up. You know, I don't yeah. care what time. Not 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 before eight. Right. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> I might be I might not be in my best cute condition at eight AM. <laughs> well the good thing is it's an afternoon thing, so Right. Yeah, and uh, and our and all of our school district is closed and everything. Yeah, that's because a lot they of them are. they were they I mean I kept thinking how are they they cannot have school. And I wasn't gonna have my daughter go anyway. Yeah. How old's your daughter? And she's fifteen. Yeah. Because I was like, what? this is like a huge, ex you know, what? They'll be at school when this is happening? No. Yeah. And then they, they figured out, we probably shouldn't have buses trying to leave at the same time that all of this is happening. So Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a smart move. It's a big deal. All right, it's going to be question time, sir. Got it. Lightning round. Now, see, I already asked this one. Oh, dang it. All right, hold on. Ah, uh, let's see here. I have to think of something. Something came to me when we were talking, too. Because some of these I kind of asked without knowing I was asking them. <laughs> it's all right. They can be as spontaneous as you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Okay, yep, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Okay, we are back with Bert Vescalani, Vescalani, and we have some questions for you. Um, my first question is, so... Let's say you brought back the laser light show because they don't, it's not yeah. there, is it? Right? No, not right we, did, now? we did bring it back uh, for the 50th anniversary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say we're going to bring it back tomorrow. Yeah. What music, Ooh. what music would you choose? Well, I'm kind of a Led Zeppelin guy. Wow. So I gotta we would be go with the Led with Zeppelin. And maybe it's an age related thing. Um, <laughs> but Pink Floyd is what you have to show True. at a laser show. True. I mean, it's just like, it's. The well, that was the staple. traditional, right? Yeah. 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 So, and if they legalize marijuana, we're really good, right? <laughs> it would. <laughs> I, I, I can't condone that behavior in the planetarium, but um, I've been told way back way when. Way back when. Yeah, that was that, that was there the was a reputation. cloud of smoke coming in uh, to the events. I've just been told. I don't know if that's true. We don't not. know if it's true. It's just hearsay. Hearsay. <laughs> okay, so. You've been to, I'm going to guess, several museums and exhibits over your lifetime. Yeah. Was there was there ever one that kind of got away, like that you really wanted to have at your place and you just couldn't, or it hmm. didn't work out, or what have you? That's a great question. I I can't I can't think of any um, that. I mean, we're we've got the grand prize next year, um, so. Can you uh, tell us what it is? I can. Oh. Um, I can because it's public now. Uh, okay, good. It was for a long time. We had to keep it secret. But we are bringing in the Columbia Space Module, the Apollo 11. Really? Um, it's the first time that it's been out of Smithsonian since um, it toured when it first landed. So oh, it's been almost awesome. 50 years. And it'll be in um, Houston, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, and Seattle. And then it goes back. Oh wow! So we're the only Midwest location for that. Um, that that is the big grand prize for me. That's awesome. And the reason it is is because it's this thing in in everyone's memory, um, and at certain age, really ingrained in their memory. Right. Um, about this accomplishment that we did in the United States, this amazing feat that took so many people with so many discreet jobs without error to make it work. Yeah. And, you know, we think about, you know, just doing anything these days and all the opportunities there are to screw it up, right? <laughs> right, right, yeah. And they did it. And they brought people back to Earth alive. And 
that, that that's incredible. That's an incredible story. And St. Louis played a huge part in it because the Mercury and Gemini capsules that led to the later Apollo missions started here, were built here by McDonnell Douglas. Ah, uh, yeah, right. And so astronauts were trained here. People developed all the tools here that were later used. There I didn't was, know the astronauts were trained oh, here. Absolutely. There was a big group of astronauts that went through their initial training here in St. Louis. Now, later, it was kind of hijacked by another city and place, and, you know, NASA <laughs> did some things. But, you know, it, it really did start here. Um, and some of the most creative problem-solving and solution-oriented opportunities that were developed were developed right here in St. Louis. St. Cool. Louis has got a great deal of pride, or should have, in, in their role in the in the space program. And when, when will that be here? That will be in their summer of 18. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yay. I'm totally coming to that. It, it'll, it'll be awesome. It'll, it'll be awesome. And then we're adding some other ex exhibit experiences around it. Um, and it, Yeah, it'll, it'll be cool. I, I've seen the module when we did the uh, press release and went out and, and looked at it. It's big. It's as big as the room that we're sitting in. Um, and uh, it's cool. Oh, but awesome. you, you think about jamming people in this Well, thing. yeah, you see them and you're like, you have to really like each other. Oh, boy. You have to be, or, or be very tolerant of the person that drives you crazy or sitting next to for however long. I mean, a it looks... A long time, right. You cannot and, be claustrophobic. And stressful, right? I mean, these right. are... The, the, no one really knew if it could really work. Yeah. I mean, they all were speculating. They did the, you know, calculations and all the... But they weren't positive about that. Right. It hadn't been done before. Can you imagine? It, I just it's can't incredible. even imagine. It's you, absolutely incredible. You would incredible. have to totally prepare mentally and emotionally, and I just can't even imagine it. And and the idea that, you know, this phone that we're using to podcast, right, and, right. and show this live had more computing power than they had at NASA at the time right. to right. get the... I mean, it's pretty... It's, it is kind of, Yeah, right? It's pretty freaky. And, and so I believe that is one of many stories of why I believe that science and and creative people and smart people and and I think you have to have both creative uh, from an art space right. as well as the STEM you know science technology engineering math together can uh, can can solve any problem I mean I, I I really believe that now it may take longer than than we have right um, or it may be in the wrong direction at first but eventually. <laughs> Um, I, I believe in uh, human ingenuity and, and the ability to, to solve the problems, all of them, that, that we're faced with right now. Yay, us. I love it. Optimism. It is. I'm, I'm on the optimistic side of things. So I'm like, well, we will figure it out. And we mm -hmm. look kind of wonky right now, but we'll yeah. figure it out. Absolutely. So you spent a long time in Chicago. Yep. Now you're in St. Louis. Yep. Chicago versus St. Louis pizza. Oh. <laughs> well... <laughs> Ooh, I, I, go ahead, Miss Dancer. Uh, it <laughs> you can you can you can say if you don't dig the the pro provel provolone cheese. Yeah, I'm not really sure of. what provel is. Still, I know a people lot of people me, say that. A lot of people that are not and, from St. And Louis. And St. Louis like, what is the heck is with the cheese? Beat me up over this. So I, I'll be very <laughs> I'll, I'll be very kind. I it's new for me. It's an acquired taste. Right. And and, and I haven't acquired it yet. Um, the I, I don't. Um, I don't like deep dish over a thinner crust. Okay. Um, I do like it. Right. And, and I'll eat it. But um, I really, I'm kind of a thinner crust guy. Um, and that's, So we were good there. We're good there. We're good there. Um, there's there's good pizza in St. Louis. There There is. I've uh, experimented around a little bit. Right. And had some good pizza. My mouth is watering now as we get closer to lunchtime. <laughs> and it's almost lunchtime, so. <laughs> um, so there's some good stuff. I, Chicago has its place in pizza world, and right. St. Louis has its place. How diplomatic was that? That, that was perfect. <laughs> but if I were to go to Chicago, I mean, yeah. where is the place to get deep dish pizza now? Is it still Gino Z's? I, I mean, there's some other, there's some new Yeah, there probably right? is. I, I've been gone for a while. Okay. Um, we could call my daughter and, and she could right, tell us and let us know. But yeah, there's there's great pizza in Chicago. And, you know, I think back when I was living there, um, there were really, you know, a few Giordano's and a few others that were the places that you went and everyone went there. 
Uh, um, gotcha. And then there was other places that did it probably as well, but no one knew about. Right, right. The little uh, hole in the wall place. Yeah, that Taylor just had Street it used to have. You know, that used to be Little Italy in the in the olden days. I guess it still is a little bit, but. Uh, and Taylor Street in Chicago was was the place that you go. It was kind of our version of the Hill. Gotcha. Although gotcha. I would say the Hill is far cooler than um, than Chicago's Taylor Street was. Really? Yeah. Awesome for us. Yeah, the Hill is awesome. <laughs> the Hill is really awesome. It's it's a very special place. Have you been to Missouri Baking Company and gotten the cookies? Oh, yeah. those are like my favorites. At my first week in St. Louis, someone brought me a care package. Oh, from there. Nice care package. Uh -huh. You're like, hello, I can hang out here. <laughs> yeah, this may not be so bad. Yeah. Well, what else do you want to tell us about the Science Center that's coming up? We, we've, we've made a ton of changes. And uh, if, if you only see a little bit of the Science Center, you won't recognize them. Um, we, we added a makerspace last two years ago. Right, We yeah. built a Mars experience where we've got the rovers. We redid the early childhood space. We added Grow. Uh, we've got more coming, um, some exciting new plans for exhibits. Uh, we'll, you'll start to see a, a different science center uh, even more aggressively in the next several years. We're, um, we're planning to add, add a new entrance uh, to the science center so it faces okay. the side of where you park. Oh. so that you can walk right in. Gotcha. Um, when we added the expansion for the uh, special exhibit hall, mm -hmm. Um, that allows us to have King Tut and and uh, the Destination Moon is the name of the exhibit next year. Oh, allows us cool. to have those kinds of exhibits and opportunities. And we also do a ton of programming. Teachers are, are coming to us more frequently than they have in the past, which is a great sign. And we built a lot of programs and opportunities for educators uh, that will make the experience at the Science Center richer and, and fuller for the students and for them to make it a, a better experience. We have a lot of partnerships. Um, we have a, a youth program that continues to take shape and with done with teens here in, in St. Louis, which is a great program. It's been around for a long time. Um, it goes on and on and on. I, I, I'm very proud of our team. We're they're working hard and doing good things. Our guest satisfaction has never been higher. Um, our visitation is incredibly strong. Um, we see almost, a, well, we see a million people a year through our doors. Wow. And that puts us amongst a very small uh, group of science centers really? uh, across the U.S. and the world. Uh, we're usually in the top 15 most attended in the world. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, yes. you know, St. Louis's Little Science Center has actually got a very big impact. We put 330,000 people through the planetarium. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so we've got a lot of, we've got some exciting things happening. Um, of course, the eclipse is happening in August. Yep. In September, we're going to uh, be making an announcement about something that we're doing around the planetarium that will be pretty exciting. Cool. And when I can talk about that, I will. All right. Uh, and yeah, there's more to come. And you are going to be a TEDx Gateway Art speaker for our October 27th event. Um, so thank you for that, first of all. But And don't divulge too much yeah. about what you're going to be talking about, but just about the experience so far of working with TEDx. It, it's been great. Uh, you know, I think a lot of us have, uh, when, when TEDx, when TED first started, mm -hmm. we started kind of, those of us who like to learn yes. and, and get, you know, little snippets of information and kind of, uh, small components uh, found uh, that they were pretty compelling and uh, you could find almost any topic now right. for sure oh yeah and then when the local versions the regionally based uh, versions of TED started uh, it was a, a kind of a, a, a new spice um, to TED I thought which kind of took the giant stage and the big performance and all of the things with the best in the world and so on and said, hey, look, we've got some people that are doing amazing things in our community. Right. And some people that are odd. What was, how was your introduction? That people are weird or odd? Or... I, so I said weird, weird, wacky, and wonderful. Okay. So the weird and wacky <laughs> I've got, we'll see on the wonderful, but uh, that, that, that's what makes it great, right? And um, so I think the experience for me has been uh, learning, I've done a lot of public speaking, so I've been out in front of, of a public a lot over mm -hmm. the years. Um, but it's it's a skill that you have to constantly hone right. and work on. So my speech coach, my um, process of going through the classes and getting some insights on storytelling and ideas, 
are really powerful in helping you not only think about in this talk, but really in, in the work that we do. How do we tell our stories better? How do we engage our public better? How do we um, get people to get as excited as we get about a topic that may seem a little bit boring from, from the out, but it's really pretty cool? And uh, so that's been great so far. And, and we're only a little way in the journey. There's more to come. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to show up before you know it. But, yeah, yeah. it's we're still kind of early in the game, thank goodness, because yeah. <laughs> there's so much I still much have an outline to do. To do. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like you sign up to do this, and then we go, wow, did you know it was going to be this much work? And we yeah. try to prepare people, but it, it really it's it's takes dedication and commitment to yeah. get that there's a lot of hours in there, there. And, and it's good and and you know for such a short talk the amount of hours that you I put know. in is incredible because it's like every single word is like you know yeah i know yeah. i'm feeling it i get it <laughs> yeah it's great though i i've enjoyed it a lot well thank you so much bert thanks for coming in and Absolutely. doing the podcast today really well, thanks. appreciate it, it awesome things about the science center yay love learning about yeah. it and for everybody out there, don't forget we're on iTunes. Uh, please subscribe to Mishmash. And thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Good. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you bet. Oh, I'm so excited about that exhibit. Yeah, it'll be great. And, you know, we're going to add, uh, right now our, our thought is to add the, the St. Louis story to the before and the after because Boeing is developing a great deal in space right now. They have a whole space division that is is doing some incredible things. And wow. people they hear about Elon Musk and others, but you, you don't hear about this, you know, the company that literally is in our backyard exactly. producing capsules and spacesuits and, you know, uh, mechanisms and machines and all kinds of things to, to do them. It is a St. Louis thing though. We're we're terrible at tooting our own horn over we are. here. We really are. I mean it's one that's one of the reasons why we as a TEDx chose to only bring in people that were connected to the area so yeah. that we could, you know, uplift our area. So Well I you know the the joke I always uh, um, make is that when I lived in Chicago, Chicago spoke with a megaphone. Everything that they did was, hey, we're in Chicago. Here we, here we are. And here it's a whisper. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did these really cool things. Yeah. Cortex, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Danforth plants on something? Yeah. You know, and it's like, I mean, Danforth, you know, as you were talking about Carrington, um, they're amazing. The I stuff know. that they're doing is amazing. Um, you know, we've got one of the most attended zoos in the world, one of the most attended aquariums. I mean, <laughs> That's my old world. And science centers. I mean, you go on and on and yeah. on. We've got a lot of first or biggest or whatever, um, but it's hard for us to, to brag about it. Yeah. we got to get more. I guess we could be. I don't know. It's not like us. <laughs> yeah. and, and I, But I think there's a way to do it without being Being cocky. super braggy. I mean, just being yeah. like, hey, we've got some cool stuff. You should check it out. I had, a, I had a board member once uh, that used the term swagger, and, you know, he, he said, you know, we got to get our swagger back. Yeah. And um, I, I like that. It, it's it's a it's a not cocky but comfortable, right? Right. Exactly. Well, awesome. Well, here I do. Oh, bye, everybody. <laughs> hey, Moses. Oh, who else is here? Oh, hi, Gabby.